What's good people, it's Jay Cactus here and in this video we're going to be making a sample boom bat beat. But before we start, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. I'm dropping new content on a weekly basis. So yeah, let's get into it. Alright, so the first thing I do when I'm sampling is to actually drag the sample into FL and then edit in Edison. And then I'd have a listen through and find some loops that I want to chop up or use. It's kind of good to stick this on snap to zero crossing because then it will help you get a perfect loop without those clicks or pops. But if you need to refine it, then turn that off and you can get a bit more precise with it. So once I found the loops that I want to chop up, I'll create a basic drum pattern just to get a bit of a groove going. So I'm going to keep the tempo around 85 and see what I can come up with. And then after I quantize that, it sounds like this. And I'm going to leave the velocities a bit natural. Whenever you're making a boom bap track, you need that swinging, you need that realistic sound. So that's why I keep some of the velocities lower than the others, a bit like ghost notes. So you'll hear this one before it'll go doo -doo, rather than the same volume. like that. Then we're going to add the snare. I'm going to quantize the snare. I'm just holding shift and dragging the mouse just to get them the same volume. The other thing to do is make sure that you have this up. This is the swing dial so this will in a way bring everything off grid or just give it a bit more of a swing so it's less like robotic and strictly on grid. It just gives it more of a bounce. So that's perfect for boom back beats. And then for the hi-hat, I'm just gonna record something in. So for the hi-hat, leave it off the grid. You can change a couple if you need to, but you want that realistic swing because when a drummer's playing, they're not getting everything like in perfect time. So with boom bat beats, always pick realistic or live drum sounds and then just try making it more natural. That's the key. Another easy way to do it, if you did quantize everything, you could hold Alt, Shift and then press right a couple times and that will just bring it slightly off grid and that'll sound like this. So with that and the swing dial increased, it's gonna sound more natural. All right, so for this beat, I've actually chosen a, a hi-hat loop. It had some open hi-hats in there and I like the swing on it. So just for this tutorial, I thought I'd speed things up. So together, this sounds like. Right? Right, so now it's time to chop up the sample. I've got the loops that I wanted to chop up. First thing I'm gonna do is open Fruit Slicer. I'm gonna put the pitch up to about 500. I'm also gonna cut it by B. And then I'm gonna bring the attack up so that you don't really get those clicks or popping noises. Right, so I'm gonna create a sample pattern just drag this on here and just loop that so I can record something in. I'm going to bring the velocities the same for this one. So now I'm going to do the same for the other loops and see what I can come up with. I just want a bit of variation so it's not the same pattern over and over again. Right, so I finished chopping up the sample. I did the same as the first one, just with the other loops. Quantized the sample. A couple of them were a bit loud, so I just brought down some of the notes. But I'll show you what these sound like. I 
I'm also here with some vinyl scratches, so I'm gonna have a look through the splice and see what I can find. So for the intro, I found these, which sound pretty cool. <laughs> Latest word also from National Press Services in Washington, D.C. What did it say? She can't walk. She's too weak. <laughs> they sound sick. Alright, so I'm just going to finish arranging this beat and then I'll show you what I'll come up with. Right, so I finished mixing and arranging the beat. And the only thing that I've done different is instead of creating my own bass line, I've used a bass line from the sample. So what I did was, you can see that the sample is all on this track up here. So once I had everything highlighted, I clicked arm disk recording, alt and R, and then I rendered that. And then I created a duplicate of the sample, put it down here. And then I sent that to a different mixer channel in track nine. And I wanted this with a bass. So in the sample, I added some RC20 just to give it some, some vintage sounds, add some noise, a bit of wobble and distortion, a tiny bit of delay just to act as a bit of a reverb. And then in the EQ, I took out the lows. And then in the sample for the bass, I did the opposite. I took out the highs, boosted some of the bass, and then I used our bass stereo just to give it even more bass. Because once I pitched it up, I wasn't really getting them low frequencies. so. That's why I like our, our bass, you can really get them low frequencies with it. Again, just another EQ just to boost some more lows. Fab filter satin just to add a bit of saturation, only in the high end though. I left the bass frequencies, but I just wanted to try help it cut through phones a bit more. And then in the EQ, all I've done here is kind of like a side chain compression. So every time the kick hits, the EQ is going to duck in the lows, but only in the frequency that the kick's hitting. So, let me show you. Latest word also from National Press Services in Washington, D.C. What did it say? She can't walk, she's too weak. Just a couple dB reduction, I didn't want to go too much. And to do that, all you need to do is have fruity peak controller on the kick make sure it's off mute and then you can adjust the volume the volume is going to determine how much the eq ducks in the bass and then in the bass you want to use this frequency to go to where the kick's hitting right click on here link to controller you select inverted from here you select peak control here and then set it to 0.5 and accept and that's how you'll get that side chain compression, but only in certain frequencies. So in the sample, I also made it a little bit wider. With the kick, I just boosted the volume a bit with the soft clipper. I've already shown you the peak controller, and then I didn't change anything on the EQ. I left the snare because it was already sounding crisp. I've already shown you the bass. And then on the vocal effects, I just took out some of the lows and then I used a delay in one part, which was up here. Have you reached the birdie? And a marijuana And then on the master channel, I just added a stealth limiter, just to bring up the volume a bit. So it's just a quick video today. I just wanted to show you my process when I'm chopping up samples and mixing them. So I hope you like the beat and if you did, then please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Again, I'm dropping new content on a weekly basis. So until next time. Have you reached the verdict? And a marijuana heading.